When you receive a new instrument, you will find several boxes with accessories and parts you need for installation. But first of all, we start here with the water hoses for drain and for supplying fresh water. Here we have some power plugs, communication cable, USB and so on. Also the computer itself is in here. Display, keyboard and so on. And then of course we have these two boxes. This one contains the measuring cell. The second one contains mainly beside a mouse pad, some cleaning paper, a surfactant. This is a USB stick that also contains the software. And here we have a F500 fridge standard material, some cleaning powder, here a spatula, a screwdriver and the bits for the screwdriver. Okay, we now took out the instrument from the crate and we placed the measuring unit to its back. So we have access to the security lock that fixes the movable part of the detector system during transportation. We simply remove this here and now we are ready to place the instrument on the bench. Okay, so here we have the measuring unit with its own external 20 volt power supply. In here we have the measuring cell that goes into the measuring unit, of course. This is the wet dispersing unit and these are just the hoses to connect the unit with the measuring cell. This is our new separate ultrasonic box with its own AC power cable. Then we have the connection cables between the wet dispersion unit and the measuring unit, as well as the connection cable between the measuring unit and the computer, which is this little thing right here. Please note that this can also be mounted to the back of the display. All the connection cables are included, as well as the mouse and the keyboard. Okay, let's have a look to the measuring cell. As you see, no tools are required for opening. You simply rotate the quick release knob. And here is the first glass. And the seal can easily be removed. After cleaning all parts, you simply put back the seal and you mount the window again and close the cell. Now we take the cell, insert it into our measuring unit and close the lock. Now we can connect the cables according to the indication at the back of the instrument. And I start with the power supply. The next step is the dispersing units. As you can see, there are four different sockets and it doesn't matter which one you take for which unit. Also, you need a separate connection for the ultrasonic box. Last but not least, we need the connection cable to the computer. So, in the next step, we take our ultrasonic box and we attach it to the back of the wet dispersing unit. Then we take this whole package and put it in front of the measuring unit. Now we can connect the 
separate power supply for the ultrasonic box and the two connection cables to the measuring unit. First the ultrasonic box and then of course the wet dispersion unit. To connect the measuring cell with our wet dispersion unit and the ultrasonic box you will find three hoses, two long, one short. We start with the long one, connect one end to the indication from bath to cell at our wet dispersion unit. If you find them disturbing, please feel free to remove these black coil springs as they are there just for optical reasons. The other end is then connected with the measuring cell and the indication to cell. The second long hose is now connected with the port from cell at the measuring cell and the other end goes to our ultrasonic box and please note to take the lower entry. There is a reason for this as if the ultrasonic box produces any air bubbles these have this way the opportunity to go up and then find their way into the wet dispersion unit and there get out of our system. So now we take the short hose, connect one end to the ultrasonic box and the other end to our water inlet at the wet dispersion unit. Then we move back to the other side of our wet dispersion unit, take the water inlet, connect it with the wet dispersion unit and fasten the screw as firm as possible with the delivered screwdriver. Second thing is of course the drain. You will find this hose delivered with the instrument which is quite long so you can of course just cut it to your corresponding need. Put one end in the sink and the other end is attached by hand and that's enough. After plugging in our HDMI cable of the display and the two USB connections for the mouse and the keyboard, we take our data cable of the A22 Next and we plug it in to one of the free blue USB ports. After switching on the computer you find all the necessary things pre-installed. First of all the software mask control right here and additionally you find a Q&A, the operating manual and the software manual in PDF form here on the right. Also we have a long distance maintenance tool with which you can connect to our technician via TeamViewer. Let's now start the software. The first thing you see in the startup screen is the main menu. As you want to make sure that your computer communicates with your A22, you go into the configuration and check which COM port is selected right here. Therefore, you open the Windows 10 settings, go into the device settings, and check the COM port right here. So as you can see in this case it's COM port 4 and in our software it is COM port 4 selected so everything should be working fine. Let's go back to the main data now, save our changes and have a look in the data menu. As you can see it's very similar to the Windows Explorer which should make it very easy to use for everybody. So we go into the data folder and in here we will now create a new subfolder. We will call this A22 Next Fridge and hit the OK button. Now this is our new measurement folder which we open by double clicking. The first thing you do in the measurement folder is click on new measurement and perform a beam alignment. This will align the laser beam perfectly into the middle of the main detector. 
To perform an actual measurement, we again click to New Measurement and select one of the measuring SOPs. Here we can now change any of the parameters, which we will not do now, so we just click Start Measurement and enter any information that seems necessary or important to us into the Data Input window. After clicking OK, the dark measurement will start. Here, the signals will be taken without the laser switched on. In the next step, we perform a background measurement. Now the laser is switched on, but we measure without sample in our system. These two measurements will then be added and subtracted from our actual measurement of our sample. In the sample dilution window, we now see on the left-hand side our beam obscuration. This indicates the percentage of the original laser beam which is then diffracted by our sample. Typically we want to reach values somewhere in between 8 and 15 percent. Here we can see the signals of our detector elements while above that you see an estimated distribution of our particle size. As soon as we give the sample into our wet dispersion unit, you now see the beam obscuration rising. When the preset value in our SOP is reached, the countdown down here will start. You can either wait until the countdown hits zero or manually start your measurement. As we selected three measurements in a row, you will now see each measurement taking 10 seconds as set in the SOP, so altogether after 30 seconds we will be finished with our three measurements. Since the first two are already in, let's have a look. Down here in the value chart you see the particle size distribution. If you want to look at the values in numbers, you click to user values and now get an idea about your D10, D50, D90 for all three of our measurements. The corresponding values for every measurement are also seen on the right hand side under properties. If there are certain parameters which are of special interest to you, you just right click into the top of the table and select the column chooser. Now we can for example add the beam obscuration or add the arrow value or anything that is of special interest for you. If there are any values which you are not interested in, you just take them out of your measurement list. Once you are satisfied with the results obtained, you select the measurements which you want to create a report for. You just go to print, select the report you want to use. After checking that the preview is just the way you want your report to be, you go to File, Export Document, click OK and you can save your report as a PDF. There you go. And this is the next generation in laser particle sizing. The Analyst Z22 next. Thank you for watching.